Hello, I can see you all slagging me off in the, in the comments. Yes, we're a little bit late. I apologise. We've just had to do a whole channel rebrand in about an hour, not expecting that we were doing a show tonight. But of course, Villa always do what you don't want them to do. And even though I'm pleased that they are signing a player, I could have done with it being 24 hours later. I'm your host on 1874. This is a new show, The Drop In, and I'm joined by European football expert Kevin Hatchard. Just been on Sky Sports News talking about transfers, and then thankfully we've managed to agree terms and get him on 1874 as well to discuss Musa Diaby, Kev, a player that you've watched play many times, a player I imagine you've commentated on many times as well in the Bundesliga. Just how excited should Villa fans be about this signing? Yeah, really excited because it's supposed to be entertainment, right? It's supposed to be fun and he's definitely that. Um, he's a bit of a pocket rocket. He's quick, he's direct, he wants to run at people. I think one of the things about him is he's really quick with the ball and without the ball, if that makes sense. Some players, when they're in possession, slow down a fair bit. Well, that's not the case with him at all. He's somebody that can play on both flanks. I I think he's best on the right-hand side, cutting in on his left. Loves the shot. Um, has really added goals to his game in the last couple of seasons, which I think is encouraging. Has always been pretty good in terms of assists. And I think in terms of pure attacking talent, there's somebody very exciting there. In terms of pedigree as well, I know Villa have obviously made giant strides under Unai Emery in the, in the past six to six to seven months. Qualifying for Europe was something that no Villa fan would have expected at, at Christmas. Are you... A little bit surprised maybe that the Villa have managed to pull off a signing like this because he's a player who's been linked with you know Arsenal and Newcastle. I think if you'd have asked anyone in the summer where he was going to go, I think the two teams that were coming up the most would have been Arsenal and Newcastle. But Villa have pushed and beat off Saudi competitors as well and, and managed to get him in. Are you, a, as, a, as an outsider, not a Villa fan, are, are you a little bit surprised that they've managed to do it? Yeah, I'm a bit. I, I must admit, a few days ago, Villa fans were asking me on Twitter whether I thought Diaby would go to Villa and I, I, my feeling was not that Villa wasn't an attractive destination but more that I thought that would smoke out other teams and I thought that Newcastle having watched him for a long long time might have pulled the trigger on him because mm. he's the kind of guy that they're signing they're signing people who are good but have room to grow rather than finished products so I thought they would go for him, but they didn't. And I thought other clubs on the continent might have pushed for him. I thought Paris might have been tempted to try and bring him back, actually. But Villa have put together a very competitive package. They've clearly convinced him to come. Unai Emery, I think, is a massive part of that. We spoke about Emery when he joined. And I felt that he was going to be able to take the team forward and take the club forward. And that's exactly what he's done. And I think... I think it shows a couple of things, actually. I I think, A, it shows Villa's ambition and it shows how seriously they're being taken. Let's not forget, when Joao Felix was being linked with a move away from Atleti, who was the club people were talking about? It was Villa. Now, if you'd have said to Villa fans a year ago, two years ago, you might be in with a shot of signing Joao Felix, they'd have thought you were mad. So that shows how far the club's come. I think there's a more global general point here, which is that the Premier League is so strong now and so financially strong. You've got a situation where top Italian clubs, top German clubs, top French clubs aren't just competing with their equivalents in England. They're competing with Bournemouth. They're competing yeah. with Villa. They're competing with Burnley. They're competing with, you know, you name it. If you're a Premier League club, you can really get in ahead of some of these blue chip blue chip European clubs. So I think it's great for Villa. He's not perfect, and I'm sure we'll discuss where I think there's room for improvement soon, but he's very much a guy that can get people off their seats. I do believe that, and I think you'll have fun watching him. I mean, I'm excited because he's he's a high profile player. Obviously, it's, it looks like it's around 34.6 million. I think it was that, that, that I read. I think that's a, a club record. At least it's close if, if if it's not a club record. So it's a big signing for the club. He'll obviously be getting paid very very well. I, I imagine as well. I think there done... might be some add-ons in that day yeah. as well. I'd be surprised if there aren't because that, in terms of what Leverkusen would have wanted to get for him, 
that's quite significantly below that what yeah, they I was would have say, wanted. Do you think it's? Do you think that's in this in, in the modern day transfer market? Is it, a, is it a bit cheap? Yeah, it is a bit. I, I I'd be really interested to see what actually the full package is because what tends to happen is, as you well know, you get a headline figure, but then the devil's in the detail, and then you see what the add-ons are. But I think Leverkusen had got to a point with him, and you find this a lot with German clubs. You find this with Leipzig a lot. They're not stupid. They know that you get to a certain point in a player's development. He's got two years left on his deal. So you say to him, OK, if you clearly want to move on, we get it, but we want a good chunk of money for you. Now, what they didn't do, obviously, the Saudi interest would have got a little bit of a bidding war going and certainly Villa had to have multiple bids to get him but they haven't completely priced him out of a move uh, and I think it's something that ultimately works for all parties. Yeah Villa have obviously done business previously with Leverkusen a couple of years ago that they signed Leon Bailey who's had a mixed time at Villa first season very yeah. disrupted by injury second That's season. Career. Yeah second season some moments of of magic but generally pretty inconsistent is there similarities between between the two players? Would you say that Di- Diaby's maybe a rung above Baylor? Yeah, Diaby's okay. better. I, I do believe that. I think I think he's more consistent. I, I think Bailey is again. Bailey is fun. Look, they're both tricky wingers, and they've he's got not pace. always fun, Kev. <laughs> no, well, this is it. And I I think if you look at Diaby's work with Leverkusen over the past few seasons. As I say, the one leap he's made, I would say, in the last couple of years is goals. So he he always used to get assists, but he's added goals to that. And I think that's what really caught the eye of Didier Deschamps when he called him up for France and thought this is somebody that can actually deliver on a regular basis. Now, this is where the Saudi thing, I think, is really interesting, right? Because... What we don't know with all of this movement to Saudi, we don't know how it's going to impact players in the international game. Mm. Because we don't know if he'd have gone to Saudi, would that have harmed his chances of playing for France in the future? Now, it may well be that it wouldn't, but it may well be that it would. And Didier Deschamps would look and say, well, at the moment, it's not a high enough quality league for me to say that, you know, you're not playing in Europe. You're not playing in the Champions League. You're not playing in any kind of continental competition. Whereas if you go to the Premier League, then that's a good thing to have on the CV. And then he can go to Deschamps and say, well, look, I'm playing at a high level. So I think that's really interesting that he's made that move because a lot of players obviously have taken that Saudi money. Yeah. Other than Neves, though, I'm struggling to think of someone who isn't around the, the 30 mark that, that, that's that gone there. I think I think you're right about the international thing is interesting, but surely you're, you're signing your own retirement from international football whilst, you, whilst you're playing in the Saudi League. If you're 23, 24 and you're, well, going, and you're going to play there, you would think, though, wouldn't you, that yeah. international-wise, like you've just said, he's more likely to make a splash with France being at Villa than he is being in, being in Saudi Arabia. Well, also players of his generation... Um, which sadly is not my generation and, and it's not, mine either. not yours. No, it's mine. Not, not even slightly. Um, but look, players of that generation, they grew up watching the Premier League and the Premier League is very much imprinted on them from a very early age. That's what Saudi doesn't have. Saudi has the money. Saudi, I'm sure, will have a thriving league in the next few years. But the one thing it's not going to have for a while is that history with players you know that the Saudi football I don't want to go on about Saudi too much no. because of course you know we're talking about Diaby but I just think it's interesting that he's made that choice because what they don't have is that historical connection with players especially European players so I'd be interested to see if this is an example of things to come it's also not a global league is it the exposure that you're going to get playing in the Premier League far outweighs anything that you're going to yeah, do in Saudi 100%. Arabia at the moment look, look the money is I mean, they, they earn a lot of money anyway, the footballers, but it's a life, it's an obscene amount of money, isn't it? You look at the Jordan Henderson deal, and I'm really interested to see what happens with him in England if he, if he makes that move. But he's at the latter stages of his career, whereas DRB, you know, the very early days in, in his football career at the moment. I'm just going to throw a few things at you about DRB and see if you can either debunk them or, or confirm them. The first one's a, a positive. He's, he's left footed, yes, but actually pretty productive with his right foot as well. So he's he's almost unpredictable because he can go both ways. 
Yeah, there's, there's a kind of element. I mean, it might seem like a lazy comparison, but there's a little element of Iron Robin in the sense of what he does on the right because he's got that ability to cut in on the left and do damage. But as you say, the other thing he has in the locker, which Robin could do but didn't do very often, but he could, is move back out on the right. So there is that unpredictability. There is that ability to play on the left-hand side if that's what Unai Emery wants him to do. There's also, and I'd be interested to see what happens going forward with him. I've always felt there is an opportunity for him to play as a centre-forward if you need it to. And the reason I say that is because I've always felt he's somebody that can back up a defender into the box and then do damage from there because he loves a shot. He will have a pot shot from range sometimes, but he's very good at getting into the box and getting into good positions and having a pop at goal. So primarily he's a winger. There's no doubt about that. But I'd be really interested to see if he ever uses him through the middle, Unai Emery, because wow. I think there's, there's a bit of versatility there potentially. I mean, you'll know from watching Villa, Villa have a very defined on the ball and, and off the ball system and kind of a, a 4 4 2 off the ball. So that player next to Watkins is never really an actual striker. So it's yeah. been yeah, McGinn, yeah. it's been Buendia, it's it's been uh, Leon Bailey. So it will be interesting to see where, where DRB plays. But I think it will be on kind of the, the right hand side of that, that 4 4 2 as yeah. one of the forwards, especially if Villa don't sign another forward player. I think it'll be him. Next to Watkins, McGinn on the right, which is, and Ramsey on the left, which will, will be very, very interesting. Suddenly, there's a bit of pace in that Villa team now because over the years, I think Villa have been a team that have, that have lacked pace. Throw a slight negative at you now and see whether see what you think of this is that on the ball, very, very good. Off the ball, defensive work rate is that something that that's not there? No, not at the moment. I, I think that's certainly an area where I think he can improve. I, I think. There's always been a feeling with teams playing against Leverkusen that you can get at that side because you've got Diaby in front of Frimpong and Frimpong's mm. a nightmare defensively. He's brilliant going forward, but he's not the best uh, defensively. So the thing we don't know is when Emery asks him to do that, is he capable of doing it? Is it just something he hasn't done so far? Because we know about Emery, you know, if you don't fit into that system, if you don't work without the ball, you're dead in the water, really. So why would they commit that much finance to signing a guy if he didn't think he could do it? So he clearly feels that's a possibility. I think the other thing as well is the physicality. As I say, he's a bit of a pocket rocket. He's not. He's about 5'7", I think. Mm. He, he's not the tallest. That's fine. Not every player has to be but it's whether he might get bullied a bit. So I'll be really interested to see, because he's so quick, he can get out of trouble uh, and he's good, um, you know, so good in possession in tight areas. But it's just, you know, sometimes we see this when players move to the Premier League, it can be, take a while just to get used to the, the physicality of it. So I'll be interested to see how that works out. But on the ball, thrilling, really yeah. good fun. Yeah, quick. Te technical, very yeah. good dribbler. But I think the thing that's most exciting about him is his, his shot technique. He's very, very good from distance, isn't he? Finds the corners for, from range, does, does yeah, the RB. And that's something that he, he's got quite an interesting technique, hasn't he? It's not something that every every attacking player can do. Really interesting technique, the way he hits the ball. Yeah, and I think what's interesting with that is that players... Defenders find it quite difficult to stop him in that regard. So once he gets, once he's backed somebody up into the box, he's very, very good at getting those shots away, and he finds the corners a lot. And I do just think he's dynamic. He is the kind of guy that wants to affect the game. He wants to make things happen. And I think he clearly feels this is his opportunity to really take that step because for the last couple of seasons, it's been bubbling under, oh, he's going to go. He's going to go somewhere. Um, you know, you look at the fact he was linked with Arsenal, but you'd have to compete with Saka. Hmm. And, you know, he, he, he knows probably the situation with Arsenal. So I, I think this makes a lot of sense. You get to work at a, a really good football club that's heading in the right direction with a really well-respected coach. He gets work in the Premier League. I think it's all upside from Diaby's point of view. 
And I think it should be mostly upside from Villa's point of view because there is a player that has got proven track record and has done well in European competition as well. Yeah, I think that's key. Villa don't have many players actually within the squad that have played European football before. So he comes in and he'll, he'll tick that box, which I think is really, really important because he'll be used to playing the midweek game and then going into the weekend when you've yeah. already played a tough game in Europe. And, you know, you say about, about the upside for the player that, that, it, that it's all there. I think one of the biggest things and one of the biggest positives I can spring from this is this is a player with all the tools. He's got he's got everything that you need as a as an attacking player. You just look at the improvement that Unai Emery made with everyone that was already at the club in the second half of that season. You think about what he can do with, with someone like DRB. I think that, that's really, really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, and I think as, as well with him, I always think the moments where he really, truly comes alive is in transition. In those transitional moments when it's broken a little bit and you can really go at players with that pace on the ball. So you can play with a lot in a lot of different ways with him because he can, you know, if you're attacking a, a low block, for example, he does have that ability in tight spaces and that burst of acceleration to open things up. But if you can get him in counter attacking situations, he can do all kinds of damage to teams then because if he gets you turning and he can really run at you, as you say, he can either come in on his left, he can go back out on his right. If he's on that left hand side, he can do damage as well. So he just opens things up, I think, for Villa. He gives them lots of options. And defenders hate pace. It doesn't matter what league you're in. It doesn't matter what team you're in. Defenders despise playing against people who've got pace. And he absolutely has that. I mean, Kev, you're one of my favourite people to speak to about football. So and I won't keep you much longer. I already kept you longer than I said I was going to. <laughs> Just a couple of... A I'll couple let you of, off. It's fine. A couple, couple of questions for, for you. You've mentioned Jao Felix already. He's someone that's been linked with with, with Villa again. I've, Emery is a, a big fan from what I hear. He's someone that, that Emery really, really likes. It seems like there's not much interest or much realistic interest in him. Do you think there's a chance Villa can pull off a, a, a clever loan deal for Felix? Yeah, look, I, I think what you want is a situation where it becomes a stalemate. Because you've got this really untenable situation at the moment where... They spent a massive amount of money on Joao Felix. I love him. I think he's brilliant as a player. I think as a guy, he does the maddest things sometimes. To do those public quotes about Barcelona when you've yes. got this situation is just crazy. So Atleti paid a huge amount of money to get him in the first place and then never really knew what to do with him because he just hasn't fitted in the Simeone system at all. So Joao Felix got frustrated because they weren't getting the best out of him. Simeone got frustrated with him because he wouldn't do certain things that he wanted to do. He had that spell at Chelsea where he did some good stuff, but not enough to get a move. You haven't got a club right now that's willing to pay what Atleti want. So it's whether Atleti say, do you know what? Let's just park him somewhere for a year and see what happens in the summer. Because at the time that loan deal happened to Chelsea... There was a lot of talk of Simeone moving on. And in classic Simeone fashion, he went, right, I'll show you, and delivered an amazing half season that kept him in post. And Joao Felix would have looked at it and gone, oh, man, really? <laughs> you know, he's still there, so I'm not getting back in there. So I think that's what Villa will want. They'll want that situation to continue to be a stalemate. I might be wrong, but I don't think Joao Felix would go to Saudi at this no. point. I just don't think that would happen. And so you really want Villa just hanging around and just say, we're still here, by the way. If you want to play in the Premier League, we'll take you. And you've got a great coach in Unai Emery who you can work with. So I think, again, massive coup if you get him because he's got a bit of Premier League experience now. Gorgeous player to watch on the ball. Really smart. Uh, and I think somebody Emery could really work with. Yeah, and, and as a neutral, Kev, I know we still don't know all the team's business at, at this point. But what do you think Villa's ambition should be for, for the season? Because I went on a podcast on, on Tuesday, and I, I look at the Premier League now, and I think there's Manchester City who are in a league of their own at the top. But I actually think the gap between the rest is, isn't that big. So like the gap between Villa and Manchester United, for example, now, Villa and Liverpool, I don't think it's huge. Am I being unrealistic in, in thinking that? Like, I, I genuinely think Villa could finish anywhere from, from top four to probably ninth or tenth. I think it's there. 
I, I, I think that gap is still there. Do you think? I, I've got, yeah, I do. I, I've, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of respect for what Villa have done in terms of hiring Unai Emery in the first place. Uh, and we were very positive about that when we first spoke about it. And also the signings they've made. The, the thing that Villa are doing, which I always think is a good sign, is if, if your club makes a signing that makes people go, what? Oh, OK. That's a really good sign. And they did that with Camera because I thought tons of Champions League clubs were going to come in for him. And they got him. And I know he's had a few injury issues, but good player, though. super player. Yeah. Diego Carlos was another, but obviously got the Achilles, wasn't it? More or less yeah. straight away. But love him. Think he's a great player. Um, Diaby is another. And I think they're the kind of signings that show where Villa are headed. What about Tillemans and Pau Torres? Would you feel similar about those two as well? Tillemans, not so much. Okay. I, I like very much, and I can understand why they've signed him. Um, but I, I'll be interested to see how he fits in squad-wise and how it all works. But good player. No, no doubt about that. Um, Pau Torres, I think, is fascinating. Because so good on the ball, has worked with Emery, it's the physicality and the aerial ability that's the issue with him. Uh, and I feel like that's come up at international level from time to time as well. So, like him a lot, be interested to see how he does. But I think just in general about where Villa are at, I think the only thing is what happens when they go quite far in Europe. Hmm. Because Emery traditionally has struggled a little bit with that. And when I say struggles, what you know he does is he junks the league to go for Europe to, to try and win those trophies. He's done it, he's done it time and time again. He kind of did it with Arsenal when he was chasing that Europa League, and that did for him in the end. But when he was when he was chasing that Europa League and he got to the final, their league form was dreadful at the end of the season. So the squad's heading in the right direction. Top four, I think, is a push right now, maybe. But if they keep heading in the right direction, get more European experience, keep making these signings in a couple of seasons, absolutely no doubt. But then I didn't think Newcastle would make it, and they did. No. And, you know, do I think there's a massive gap between Newcastle and Villa in terms of the squad? Not huge, not really. Uh, and I think, you know, the I think Emery probably has the edge as a coach uh, in terms of his experience. So... Yeah, there's no reason why you can't have that ambition. Just might take a couple of seasons rather than just the one, but we'll see. Yeah, I think the European thing obviously is key. The, the Thursday, Sunday, the, the way the schedule is, I think that is something that the Villa are going to, it's going to be new to, to a lot of them, but it's obviously not new to Emery. I'm just, I think I get excited because I think, I think if you looked at the league table from when Emery started, and Villa are flitting around third or fourth in, in the Premier League if the, if the league had started when when em, Emery arrives. I think that's why I'm just I just feel the sky is the limit for for this team and under Rune Emery at the moment. I think your only issue is actually external forces. I don't think Villa are doing anything wrong at all. I think Villa are heading in the right direction off the field, on the field, no problems there. The the problem you have is that Chelsea. I know the temptation is to think they're an absolute basket case. <laughs> they are to some extent. But they've got a really, really good coach who is brilliant with young players. And what do they have? A ton of young players who are very, very talented. I don't think they're going to be anywhere near as bad again this season. I think Arsenal have bought really smartly. Yeah. I do think Liverpool, I don't know, I'm biased, but I do think Liverpool in bringing in Soboslai and McAllister, and I think they'll make one or two more, I think they'll be back where they feel they belong. So they'll be in that top four mix as well. But look, I think already they've leapt up to the level of a team like like Spurs. And I don't, I think that's a bonus. I think that's a good thing. Not a, It's not a slur that you're on the level of Spurs because, you know, they've got some world-class talent, Spurs, but they're in transition. And I think you are a lot more solid right now than they are. So, yeah, I, I, I think there's reason to be very optimistic about Villa. There's reason to think they can push for Europe. And that's what they need to do every season. Qualify for Europe every season. 
keep that positivity going, keep attracting players because Europe makes a big difference. And who knows? But the, the Premier League is as stacked as I can ever remember at that top end. It, it's crazy. It's a strong, yeah. strong league, isn't it? Strong, mad. strong league. It's mad. I don't think it's very healthy, if I'm honest. Oh, okay. With the kind of European hat on. Yeah. It's very healthy for the Premier League. But I think on a more, on a wider level, I think it is something that European clubs will look at and think, this is mad. If Bournemouth are out, out, you know, outbidding teams like, and they should be ambitious. I'm not saying Bournemouth shouldn't be ambitious. No. It's not anything against any clubs in the Premier League. And I, I like the Premier League being strong, but I just think what you're going to get in the end is a situation where it is a lot tougher for clubs to produce the kind of players that the Premier League is bringing in now because the gap will end up getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, so we'll see, but that's that's probably an argument for another day. But I, I've got real soft spot for Villa. I covered that patch for a long time. Covered Villa for a few seasons for IRN. Love going down there, and I'm really pleased to see them making this kind of signing and having a coach that really gets it. So I wish them all the best. Well, okay, Kev, I could literally sit here for hours and talk to you <laughs> about football, but thank you ever so much for, for coming on. And you wrapped it up very nicely about your feelings for Villa there. So, yeah, thanks ever so much for, for joining us and having a chat about Villa's, I say, prospective new signing, but it does look like it is happening. Most of the RB fee has been agreed. Sounds like personal terms have been agreed as well. So, hopefully, in the next few days, he will arrive at Bodymore Heath and hopefully he'll get to go to America actually and, and join the lads on tour. You'll notice we have had a channel rebrand literally about 10 minutes before Kevin myself came on. There was a video that was uploaded explaining the future of the channel so no longer the villa view now called 1874 so if you want to go and check that video out and find out why i've done a little bit of an explainer with my old friend dan rollinson so subscribe to the channel with your post notifications i'm sure we'll have kev on again later on in in the season and i'll be seeing you in a few weeks as well kev at sky yes. which, I'm, which i'm really Look really forward looking to forward that. to yep getting the transfer gang back together. Have a good rest of your Thursday evening and have a great weekend as well. Up the villa.